This company secretly rules the world. There are a few incredibly powerful companies out there, and you've probably heard about a couple of them. ABC, Apple, and Coke Industries, for example. But there's a small chance you've never heard of this one, BlackRock. This company was founded in 1988, and in just over 30 years, it's grown to become widely acclaimed as the company that uh, effectively owns the world, managing assets worth approximately $10 trillion. So what even is BlackRock? And how did a risk management company become the largest asset holder in the world, controlling the funds of potentially millions of ordinary people? BlackRock Inc. is an American multinational investment management corporation based in New York City. It started off as a risk management and fixed income institutional asset manager, eventually growing so large that it operates globally, with 70 offices in 30 countries and clients in 100 countries. So what's the story here? BlackRock was founded in 1988 by Larry Fink, who would go on to be the chairman and CEO, along with a few other people like Robert Escobedo, Susan Wagner, Barbara Novick, Ben Golub, Hugh Frater, Ralph Schlossstein. They must have made some deal with the devil, because within months, this business had turned profitable, and by the next year, the group's assets had quadrupled to $2.7 billion. The firm originally adopted the name BlackRock in 1992. That same year, the business was managing $17 billion in assets, reaching $53 billion by 94. BlackRock's rise was meteoric, to say the least. Over the decades, BlackRock would grow both organically and by its many acquisitions. By 2004, BlackRock's acquisitions would raise its assets under management to an insane $325 billion. Nowhere near as ridiculous as it is today, but back then, it was already massive enough for the United States government to contract with BlackRock to help resolve the fallout of the financial meltdown of 2008. By 2009, BlackRock would be the number one asset manager worldwide. BlackRock is larger than the largest bank in the world, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, and it's been described as a specter haunting Wall Street for several years now. Yet somehow, it still remains a mystery to most. But that hasn't stopped it from receiving a healthy amount of criticism. You can't grow as large as BlackRock without rubbing quite a few people the wrong way after all. They've received criticism for the environmental impact of their holdings. BlackRock is counted among the top three shareholders in pretty much every massive oil company out there, and it's among the top 10 shareholders in seven of the 10 biggest coal producers. These would be pretty damning criticisms, but BlackRock attempts to rebuff these criticisms, even turning around and investing heavily in environmental protection and sustainability. That's right, even legitimate criticisms aren't enough to stifle the growth of this behemoth. And when I call it a behemoth, I mean it. BlackRock manages several trillion dollars worth of assets, juggling approximately 10% of all financial assets worldwide, but its reach goes much further than just buying and holding stocks and bonds. BlackRock advises central banks, financial ministries, big investors like state funds, pension funds, and insurance companies. They also tap into their wealth of funds to invest in firms around the world. There's pretty much nothing in the financial market that BlackRock is not somehow involved in. From their headquarters in Midtown Manhattan, BlackRock pulls strings all over the world. In addition to holding huge stakes in big U.S. banks, they control significant shares in corporations on pretty much every continent, whether it's producing cars in Germany, mining for iron ore in South America, or gold mining in Africa. BlackRock does it all. So how exactly do they do it all? The financial sector is always changing. What might have worked out a few years ago certainly won't work today. This is something BlackRock is keenly aware of. So they went ahead and developed an incredibly powerful software platform to help face these changing tides, and they named it Aladdin. Aladdin's job is to perform risk analysis for BlackRock's clients. It receives sensitive data from important institutions like banks and insurance companies and uses it to make the high-stakes risk analysis people pay BlackRock exorbitant amounts of money for. Aladdin is a network of 5,000 computers. Its job is to monitor millions of trades and analyze their clients' portfolios for 24 hours every day. Day, going into every possible scenario and pinpointing with a terrifying amount of accuracy 
what might go wrong, providing some incredibly accurate levels of risk analysis. This software is so ubiquitous, it's basically become the central nervous system for some of the largest investment companies out there, and I reckon you've probably never heard of it. Aladdin doesn't just function for risk analysis, however. It provides much more for BlackRock. This software grants them access to sensitive data from important institutions like banks, pension funds, and insurance companies from around the world, basically providing them insight into the management of about $20 trillion worth of assets, on top of the gargantuan $10 trillion in assets BlackRock already manages. With access to such wealth and information, BlackRock has placed itself in a rather cozy position in the global economy. It has shares and voting rights in many of the biggest European companies, in sectors such as energy, oil and gas, transportation, and food. You know, the kind of stuff society needs to continue functioning. Trust me, BlackRock's grip over society goes way deeper than you might think. It holds public debt in the form of bonds, it holds the pension funds for a vast amount of people, and it has political power too, routinely working as an advisor for entire governments. Central banks invite BlackRock to audit regular banks and advise them about management. When the institution that controls the entire financial apparatus of a whole country has you on speed dial, you're playing in a league of your own. The ironic twist here is that since BlackRock is so massive, they're often a major shareholder in these same banks the central banks want them to audit and advise. This means that during these meetings, BlackRock is literally sitting on both sides of the table, advising the government on managing banks they already own. And even if that wasn't the case, this just grants BlackRock further access to privileged and to highly sensitive information that'll serve to make them even richer. So who was the main man responsible for bringing this juggernaut into existence? And how rich must he be now? If you want to know who to thank and or blame for the creation of BlackRock, that person would be billionaire Larry Fink. Fink has always been known as the guy who wanted more than he had, and as someone who knows the markets inside and out. A powerful combination to say the least. Ironically, he would only become the founder of such a powerfully wealthy company after suffering a massive $100 million loss for his employers. Fink got his start on Wall Street at age 23, where he worked on structuring and trading bonds, quickly rising up the ranks and becoming somewhat of a legend in a decade, helping develop the debt securitization market, which revolutionized how loans were handled on Wall Street, for better and for worse. Larry Fink's rise to prominence is just filled with ironic twists. Not only did he create one of the main tools that led to the economic meltdown, he was the same person the U.S. Treasury hired to clean it up. He would gain a reputation as a true investment mastermind, and by the age of 31, he became first Boston's youngest managing director in history, helping add a billion dollars worth of assets to their bottom line. For all intents and purposes, Larry was a golden goose. Uh, that is, until he wasn't anymore. Larry would end up losing a hundred million dollars for his company, and would turn into a toxic asset overnight. Ostracized and forced out of a company he spent 12 years making a ridiculous amount of money for. Sounds like the perfect villain origin story, doesn't it? He would eventually help found BlackRock, turn it into the giant it is today, not without a few hiccups along the way, of course, but one thing's for sure, Larry Fink certainly bounced back. He's worth over one billion dollars. So on top of controlling several trillion dollars worth of assets and having a hand in the financial decision-making of the United States government, we still aren't done talking about how incredibly powerful BlackRock is. For one, they are a lot more involved in a few incredibly popular companies and projects than most people realize. BlackRock owns a substantial amount of shares in Apple, giving them access to Apple's massive market share in smartphones and tablets. They also hold stock in Microsoft the other giant in the tech industry, proving to everyone that with enough money, you don't have to develop a single microchip to have sway over the tech industry. BlackRock also holds massive stock in pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson because they know exactly where to direct their investments. I mean, imagine not investing in things humans need to survive. And just like I mentioned earlier, some of BlackRock's largest holdings are in huge oil companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron. BlackRock has also invested in quite a few very very important projects as well. It has expanded its presence in sustainable investing and environmental, social, and corporate governance. Basically, they've spent quite a lot of money trying to go green and to look really good while they do it. BlackRock has used its immense influence to draw attention to environmental and diversity issues through incredibly helpful and certainly very important means, like sending letters to CEOs and investing in projects like the Carbon Disclosure Project. BlackRock has apparently been pushing the United States government to adopt rules 
rules requiring private companies to publicly disclose their climate impact, the diversity of their boards of directors, and other metrics, while simultaneously financially backing companies that aren't doing any of those things. Meaning once again, BlackRock sits at both sides of the table. But hey, they can't really help it. They're just that powerful. So did you know about the company that secretly rules the world? Do you think there's any company out there that rivals BlackRock? If you enjoyed this video, you should click on a video on the screen. It's plenty insightful as well. See you there.